talk about, let's swing back on him in a minute. Let's okay. swing back on him. You want to go your top five? Um, let's go for it. Here's All my right, top let's, five. Let's, let's do this. Let's go. Let's save everything but your okay. last two. Can you? Okay. Everything but your last two. So do the three, and then the last two we'll, uh, we'll leave up for the viewers to see which, uh, which team, which starting five would win. Okay, let's do it. All right, my number five is Joel Embiid. Um, Troll Ellen Embiid. Joel Embiid, I agree with you. A lot of the things you said, and this, this is one of the hard things. And these lists are subjective. Like at the end of the day, there's no way to put one of these mm -hmm. lists definitively together. It's it really comes down to your opinion, right? One of my biggest criteria, just in terms of like picking any player, in terms of where I'm going to put them, is you have to look at the faults of every player, right? And his is in line with a lot of the guys we've talked about. You know, AD and him, the injury stuff is pretty much the same, right? If anything, AD is, it, it's right there. You know, I almost said AD plays more, but that's not mm -hmm. true over the last few seasons. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the thing with Joel Embiid, and this is what I was getting to, his highest high in terms of what a single game of Joel Embiid can be is top five in the league right now. There are, There's only one dude in the league, I would say, that can play better defense and be as offensively dominant in one single game as Joel Embiid. Um, and spoiler, he's my number one player. I'm not going to say who it is, but he's my number one. Um, Joel Embiid is, is an absolute destructive force. I think if he was healthy all the time, I think he's top three. I would actually push one of my top three players out for him if he was healthy all the time. Mm -hmm. He's just not, so you do have to dock him. I think a lot of it comes down to just weird, weird rosters, weird teams. Uh, you know, beyond his injuries as a single player, which is what this list is, I think he's, to me, undeniably a top five right now. I would take him over KD. Yeah. Which I think a lot of people would disagree with that. I really do. I just, KD doesn't give you half of the defense that Joel Embiid does. You know, he's an elite rim protector. But he can also move because in being as big as he is, you know, he's, he's seven foot two, seven foot one, like 280 pounds. He's huge. Mm -hmm. He There's just not many guys that give you that. Number four for me is Luca. Number four for me is Luca. <clears throat> uh, I really went back and forth with him at number three and number four. Mm -hmm. But we need to see it for a longer stretch of time from him, like a, a full season consistently in shape being the guy that we know he is, and you and I have been on Luca forever, it's well documented. I, I need to see the defense just a, yep. a step above what it is. The defense has to go up a step. But I mean, everybody has said everything there is to be said about Luca. Offensively, at the age he's at, there's literally been like one or two guys ever, if any, that have even been close to matching what he's been in the league. And he's only going to get better. He really is. And you know, something we're going to have to talk about soon, too, is like this in shape Luca that we've seen this offseason. Is that going to carry over? And is this finally the MVP season? Is this it? And I would argue that it, it could be it could be it. You know, I think this guy's got all the tools. The biggest thing in his favor, and this is the reason why he's a top five guy for me. He is absolutely the best in the biggest moments, and it's undeniable. You know, he plays better when the lights are brightest. He gets to be the best version of himself in the biggest games, and we see it every single season. It's never a fluke. It never will be a fluke. That's just who he is, and he's going to keep being better in the playoffs, presumably for the next 15 years, I hope. Number three, Steph Curry. <clears throat> Number three, Steph. Oh, I'm kidding. Number three is Jokic. Jokic, okay. Number three is Jokic, and I went back and forth with this. Um I really debated. I had Jokic at number two for a while, um, but I, I, I do think he's three. And again, it has to be the team's success. You have to look at that. The problem for me is just that it's obviously not him. It's obviously the, the roster. Yeah. You know, all the best players on his team have been injured for the last two seasons straight. He yeah. cannot catch a break as far as having a, a good roster. And I would argue for, for Jokic in particular, of players in the last five years, there is nobody who has done more with less than Nikola Jokic. There is no player in the NBA who has done more and had more success as a team 
or you know, as an individual on a team that still ends up making it to the playoffs than Jokic mm-hmm. does. Yeah. Um, and realistically, if you put Jokic with any other top 25 star, they're they're a conference finals team. They really are. And I think that um, if if they had been healthy two seasons ago, the season that Jamal Murray hurt himself, mm-hmm. uh, I th- I thought they were a, ch- a conference finals team that season. So I have him in my top three. Bernie, what's your five through three? Okay, let's go five. Number five, I got Kevin Durant. Again, one of the best scorers of the basketball. Again, the injury concerns do have to start coming up with him just because of the fact that he does get injured quite a bit. Obviously missed the year prior to a foot injury. This year had a little bit of some some injuries as well. My thing with him is that I still think in his best day, he's an elite player. I think the, the past stuff has to come into account. I think he does have that innate ability. Uh, again, we talked to, you talked about it in our Prove It Year video. He does have a lot to prove this year. Obviously with the noise that he made about wanting a trade, maybe that was all smokescreen stuff, but either, either way, he needs to prove that he was worth the commotion, that teams were ready to give up their youth players just to bring him on the team for a chance at winning a championship. Um, the more I thought about it, I kind of told you no, but thinking about it more, it, it had to be a yes now. Because again, I think that Kevin Durant has that ability to be a top five player. Scoring the rock and running offense for him is probably a coach's dream because of how many different ways you can get Kevin Durant the ball in many different situations and he'll score the bucket no matter what. And that's to me why I think he is top five, but just like any year, he can drop down or he could go up depending on what goes on for the for the Brooklyn Nets. This has to be, for the Brooklyn Nets sake, this has to be a championship type of year for them. That has to be it has to be that run or otherwise it's looking like it's a dud yeah would you argue it has to be for him in particular like I'm, in terms it, of it does yeah I, I think so too it he does needs, him needs and season. the team yeah he needs it so bad he needs a good year because if they're if they're gonna they're gonna they're again they're gonna continue to give Kevin Durant what he wants right so if you're going to continue to give him what he wants, you're going to have to return those those uh, the favor by playing well. I mean, you have to. I mean, again, uh, Chris Haynes on the Some Dude podcast with Cuffs the Legend talked about it, that Kevin Durant's trying yeah. to fill that void. And that void is probably winning a championship on your own. So I think this has to be a proving year for Durant. He's going to be one of the hottest on the hot seats of players besides Anthony Davis, like you talked about earlier in that video because those two guys have to show that they are the number one options on the team and can get and can uh, guide their teams to that NBA Finals. And so that's why Kevin Durant for me is top five. Again, the price of being a great player, but also needs to you know have that situation where you know he needs to you know perform a lot better. Let me just ask you, just out of pure okay. curiosity, all right? Okay. You're building a team right now. You you get to build your dream team of like you get any any of these guys, but you have to pick. These are your two options. Yes. Let's just say, just for the sake of you know, you know, adding one little layer to it, not just for this season, but let's say the next three seasons, you're picking between KD and Jokic. Who are you taking? You want to win a championship over the next three season stretch? Who are you taking? I'm taking KD. It's like not even close. It's close, but I'm taking KD. Okay, okay. I'm just curious because to me, I'm taking I'm taking Jokic. Obviously, it's more. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, it's Sean. <laughs> I just like Sean saying, "Can't wait to see where." Sub- oh yeah, dude, he's top. He's top zero for me. He, d- he does deserve to be on the list of, of honorable mentions. I will tell you that, Sean. You think he's a? We need. We'll come back to Sabonis. We'll discuss Sabonis. <laughs> the Sabonis. Other guys. Sabonis is the final topic. <laughs> The bonus is the final. He's the final layer of this iceberg that we need to uncover. Uh, it's, Go ahead. it's what the people want. Uh, I, I just think Jokic is at this point in his career. I think he's more well-rounded than Kevin Durant is. But I, I, I'm definitely in a group of people who would get absolutely flamed for that take. You know, regardless of yeah. what you think about KD. But one of the reasons I asked you about the chemistry part of this equation before we even started this little exercise we're in 
is because I think it affects Kevin Durant as far as I'm concerned, where I would take him. I actually, what did I put Kevin Durant as? I had him as number six on my list, I believe, of my let final. Me, let me check. Yes, you had him at six. Good. I would probably, yeah, I mean, I would move, I'd consider moving him back one or two spaces on my list if mm-hmm. we we're discussing the chemistry, just because, like, we see what Kevin Durant has been these last couple seasons, what it's meant to Brooklyn and what their fortunes have turned into. And that to me is a player like, let's say my career is riding on it. I have to choose between these top amazing players. I think that matters in the equation personally, but um, for the sake of the list, you're, you're not wrong. I mean, KD is, there's not many people who are as offensively as just freakish as he is. And then number four is going to be one of our guys. We've been high on him this whole time he's been drafted, and that's Luka Doncic. Luka. Wow. Where is LeBron on your list, Bernie? <laughs> Where is LeBron on your list? I thought I was the biggest stan. I'm ready. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I, the reason why I had to uh, put Luka there at, at, you know, as, you know, in the top four for me is because I think that he, like, watching him play – you know, the, the change of pace that he has to the game, I think there's a lot about him that coaches are going to unlock if he does get the right team. And, and again, and again, it comes back to that conversation that we had and why I kind of dinged uh, Jokic in that sense. Uh, but, you know, I think this is also kind of a year where, where Doncic has to prove it. Again, he did get to the to the Western Conference Finals, I believe, right, against the Warriors in that, in that final because they beat the, uh, yeah, the Phoenix beat Suns. The Sun. And I think that that's a step in the right direction. And that's the reason why I have to put him higher on the list because I think that, that Doncic can do it. I think that, again, is Christian Wood going to be the answer for, for Doncic and them? Probably not. But what is going to be exciting for them is figuring out for, for Luka how to, again, get that MVP. Because I think that, again, we talked about you talked about the in-shape Luka. He does have to stay in shape in order for them to be... Uh, a team that obviously gets into the playoffs, but more so in a team that contends for the for the Western Conference Finals. Um, and so for me, I think Luca has that ability. If he can kind of continue again, the durability questions have to come into play. But I think he's shown it last year that he's kind of committed to it, and I think that it's going to be a lifestyle change for him. And I, you know, watching him play, man, he he is probably one of the best change of pace guys I've ever seen play the game. And and he's only what 21, 22 right now, maybe even 22. 22. Uh, he he's might only... be twenty one. Let me. I'll look it up. You keep going. But he's going to be one of the best players, man. I, I can already see it in him. Great. I can see that he is going to continue that elevation. And again, as soon as he gets a little bit more consistent with the three point shot, that to me is going to be the the awakening where Luca's going to win not only MVPs but also championships. I don't know if there's yeah, any. 20... No, I, I mean, I agree with you. I mean, uh, like, you know, we talked about players not in the top five that could move up into the top five. Now we have to talk about players not in the top two that could move into the top two. Luka is, like, and this is this is the one thing I'll say about Luka before we move on to our, our top threes. Mm-hmm. There is a season that is going to come from Luka, all right? And I'm going to prognosticate here for just a second. Sometime in the next five to seven years, Luca is going to have one of the probably five greatest NBA seasons of all time. Okay. Ooh, okay. Stati- statistically speaking, he will have one of the five best seasons of all time. He has literally all of the tools to put up like a 35 point per game season. Mm-hmm. It might be this season for all we know, right? The rules only go more in favor of the way Luca plays every season. Like the way that the the game is played, the way the NBA wants to sell the game and wants to play it, he is the guy, right? That they kind of model the game around, whether they mean to or not, it just suits his play style. I just think of all the players active right now who could put up, let's just say, a, you know, a historic top five campaign ever. He yeah. is that guy. And I really, really, truly think he's going to do it. Whether it's going to amount in championships, which I also think it will, you're not that good in playoffs and big games, and it never turns into anything. I don't really think there's very many players um, mm-hmm. in NBA history who have shown that they have it in the, those moments and didn't end up pulling it off at some point. I think he will pull it off. It's just my progno- prognostication says it's coming. 
somebody prepare yourself and I you know I will be there to tell you I told you so when it happens exactly. all right you ready for number three let's do it this dude oh my god hold on I'm ready <laughs> let me brace myself it's got to be Marcus Smart <laughs> right there on the list no uh, but, <laughs> but if we if we're you know if we're doing this the right way it's got to be LeBron James uh, again, you know, I could, I think, you know, with just think about this, the numbers that he put up with that old riddle team has got to be something that probably will never be done in a while. A guy at the age of 38 years old, carrying a bunch of guys that again, some of them are good, are good players individually, but what I'm not seeing from them currently for me, when it comes to, uh, like LeBron James is more so the fact that. He's not going to be a guy that carries a team anymore, clearly, but still being able to put up those numbers that he did, averaging, you know, 25, I think this year he averaged 30. That, I mean, that is that is absolutely ridiculous. And for how long he's done it and the longevity for me has to play a factor into it, LeBron James has to be in the conversation for top, top five. Because again, I think this year has to be a year where Anthony Davis moves from the 11 to 15 range where I have him and has to move up into the six to 10, has to move up into the top five for me. Because in order for them to be a, a championship winning team, a, a team that, again, wins the championships like they're supposed to, that to me has to be the big thing. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I have I have to put LeBron James at three. I think that, again, he's not the same guy that he was two years ago in the bubble. I would have probably put him a lot higher, probably would have put him one or two. Uh, but I think three is probably the right range again. He is 38 years old. He is getting older. So as you start to age, it's starting to uh, decline just a little bit. But it's not to a point where it's you know to a detriment. So I got I got him in the top three. Or sorry, yeah, I, top three. I will say in my chemistry alternate universe list of m- <laughs> more my opinion, I had him at uh, <laughs> at five. You had him at five. I like because in my heart of hearts, I I agree with you. Like, in my heart of hearts, I would want LeBron in somewhere in the top five picks. Like, if he's available and I'm picking one of those guys, like, you know, there's only a few of them that I would say undoubtedly are better right now at this point in their careers. Um, But even if you're taking just that stretch of time where AD was hurt, one of the many last season, um, but the one in particular where LeBron slid into the five and played, you know, played center for a few weeks and was just, I mean, he was just godlike. Like, there's no other way to put it. He was absolutely unstoppable by on all fronts of what he was doing. And he was playing out of position um, somewhere he had never played in his whole career, realistically. So, mm-hmm. Uh, Tar Heel Nation, what are you saying? LeBron is so cooked on D. I respect his offensive package at his age. Here, Anyone can blow by the king these days. Here's what I'll tell you about this. Yes, he will get blown by on defense, but he has to reserve those those uh, those minutes on his legs to the offensive end because Lord knows they're not going to be able to score the ball if LeBron passes to them. And again, I know that the excuse of the players and things like that, but you know you're passing to guys that are not making open shots that is a hard thing to do and so i don't necessarily well i can't defend necessarily the defense at times he's just again has to take so much pressure on the offensive end that just allows him to or doesn't allow him but he you know he needs rest you know he's not like we talked about he's not 27 years old anymore he's 38 he needs his rest he's not going to play you know we talked about this in the previous segment with gilbert arenas talking about him playing 40 40 something minutes he's not going to play that anymore that's just not his game he's not going to play 40 minutes of great both sides of the ball. He has to rest at some point because he has to carry the offensive load to such an extreme that it it, it hurts him defensively. He's a liability. True. And one thing in his defense, too, I would argue, is the, the IQ he brings on the court in terms of getting dudes in the right position. I mean, look at what happened in the 2020 bubble. I mean, look at that. That team defensively was absolutely annihilating teams and LeBron I would argue was almost just as cooked defensively as he is now the difference is that he had better defensive players that he could help put in the right position you know schematically and just tell these dudes where to go Mm -hmm. he was working with absolutely nothing defensively Mm -hmm. last season so you know 
one of the things that is is totally you know under talked about is how much teams scheme to cover up their weaknesses right look at like think of dallas dallas is completely offensively built around luca's skills and everything he can do which is pretty much everything defensively their goal is to cover up luca as much as possible right? and he's he's not a terrible defender but he's definitely not a very good defender on most nights KD is definitely not like an elite defender. I, a, a, a lot of these guys aren't. The difference is that they have better teammates around them in terms of putting mm-hmm. them in the right position. And one, their athleticism at this point in their age can cover up, a, you know, some defensive inefficiencies. So I put LeBron, what did I have him at? I think I put him at seven or eight. Seven. So put him at seven. Like, I. I would argue if anybody's wrong with LeBron, I think it's me. I would probably just say Bernie is closer to right than I am. So the only reason I put him there is I just had to keep the team success yeah. energy. I have to yeah. keep it. That's one of my things. Like you can't not make the playoffs to me and be a top five player. But if anybody should be, it's probably him. It probably is.